What's up everybody? On this video it's all about coilovers on Project Eagle Brews, so stay tuned. I'm just beyond excited today. I got so much to show you. I don't even know where to start. We got lots to do, lots to look at, lots to bolt on. Got the 86 out here. Gonna take out the launch. It's Sunday afternoon. It is, as you can see, just incredible, incredible weather. This is what I live for, man. This is this is it right here. This is awesome. This is T-top weather. Take T-tops off. You may see something sitting up there. Let me show you what I scored, guys. By the way, I put the filter back on this thing. You need to stop running with a stupid screen check it out oh my god and they're in good shape too a little bit of cracking going on there but these are the netted halos yes and they're red i posted up on instagram what do you think i should do with these now as cool as it would be to put the netted seats in the 86 the vote was unanimous everybody agrees that because they're red i shouldn't dye them so i asked the question what should i do should i dye them should I dye them gray and put them on the 86? Or should I just, you know, hold on to them? And if we find bucket seats for the 79. So right now I want to hold on to them. Now here's the deal. I plan on running this interior exactly as you see it. Okay? High backs and all. Okay? No near, no reason to run, you know, fancy late model stuff. This is going to be an old school build. It's kind of like if the 80s technology had caught up in motors and they ran an EcoBoost, but the body and looks and everything else was stuck in the in the 80s, or not, in this case, 79. That's going to be the look. So, you know, technology was advanced, but the look of the car was not. So, um, yeah. So, I got the halos. That's pretty cool. Hey, look at this. Yes, we have a coilover bolted on. And look at this. I don't know if you guys saw these. I'll have to see if I can find an old video. So, I picked up these these are nasty and dirty and disgusting. I spent all day yesterday in the sand blaster or the bead blaster. It's got glass media in it. And I got these things down to bare metal, man. And then painted a nice coat of Rust-Oleum hammer, hammered silver, because I had it, you know? But look, it ends up looking really good, man. These things look awesome. So I'm getting these ready to bolt on so that we could also bolt on. You ready for this? Yep. This is an S and S or S and W. What is this? Jesus. S and S Engineering. S and S Engineering Brembo Cadillac Brembo Brake Kit. So I've got the kit here. I got a separate video coming just for this. We're going to be installing the Brembos onto these spindles, and then today we're going to be installing the other coilovers. So this really is a coilover install video. Okay. That's what it really is all about. But I figured, let's see how far we get. If I get the coal over done, and um, maybe we can even, you know, get some engine mounts in and think about mocking this thing up. So I don't even have the bell house. I really don't have anything, you know, transmissions under there, the T5s underneath there. I don't know, I don't know. I'm not really thrilled about using my old T5 in this build. It's because everything's so new in it, but I just don't know. It really needs a TRX. If I really had the money, I'd probably get a TRX for it. It's probably overkill though. I think the T5 will handle the power of the EcoBoost just fine until we start putting power in the EcoBoost, which is going to happen. There's this little Satan flying around here in my garage. This thing needs to go away, dude. Enough talk. I talk too much. Also, one exciting, very, very exciting announcement before we go any further. There's another fox coming to the house. It is absolutely beautiful. It needs nothing. It's awesome. It's going to be my wife's daily driver. You have to wait to see it. It's coming home Tuesday or Wednesday. Um, you have to see it when, when it shows up and when I edit the video. But if you're a fan of my Instagram, so here's a plug, follow me on Instagram. Because if you follow me on Instagram, you will see this car already before I make videos of it. So my wife is daily driving a Fox. We are bringing Fox body number three to the channel. It is gonna be my wife's car. We'll talk all about that and why I decided not to let her drive this for now. She can, she can totally drive this whenever she wants. The point is, this car is too beautiful to pass up. It's got her name written all over it. I bought it for her. It's coming home. Stay tuned for that too. Okay, also when you order their coil over kit, you get a bag of hardware. What you get here is spring hat. Okay, so this goes on top of the spring. And so you get some spacers here. Okay, we'll go over that in a minute. Get two of them. I already got one on this side, right? So this is everything left. You get instructions. Uh, this is 
part number from AGE, by the way, MU-7000, 7904 Mustang. Okay, so we'll see the instructions there. And you get some uh, some spanner wrenches, okay, to adjust the ride height. Yeah. Now, another thing you need to... Oh, yeah. Another thing you'll need that does not come with... Okay, this is pretty typical for most coilover kits. They don't always come with... Um, the strut itself. So you need to order a strut. Now, this strut is specifically made for coilovers, meaning that there's some notch on the stock ones that I believe is like right here um, that doesn't happen. So you can slide uh, all the hardware over the top of here and use these on a coilover. And the way coilovers work is quite simple. Your coil is going over the shock like this instead of separate between your K member and your A arm. Now on a stock Mustang, of course, you've got your spring right here. You've got your spring bucket and your spring perch that goes up here on the top. What that means is you've got a lot, not a lot of room for a lot of spring pressure. And if you guys have ever installed these, you know that it is, it is pretty uh, pretty dangerous to install this setup. So there's a lot of advantages that come with coilovers in general. One of them is that you've got a lighter setup, much lighter setup. Um, you've got your spring directly, you've got your spring, which is directly on top of your strut which is adjustable, so you could actually install these without killing yourself and then just adjust the ride height. So the ride height is adjustable, that's also another thing. You have much more control in the car and uh, much, much more control just in the vehicle, how it handles on, you know, on, on itself. So having a strut with a spring over the strut is definitely ideal uh, when it comes to handling and performance metrics. <sighs> Always an airplane. So the struts that I've chosen here are Strange S6001EM 12B20. I'll have all the parts down here in the description. These are single adjustable. I don't really need a double adjustable. I don't need to adjust the spring or the rise. I don't need to adjust the strut rise really for drag racing. I just want to adjust the rebound rate. So that's what this is. This is kind of adjust how firm and soft the, sh uh, the strut itself will react versus some of the double ones. The double ones will adjust both your down and your up rates. So you want to really fast up, really hard down. That's good for drag racing. You want the back end to lift or the front to lift, put that weight transfer the back tires. And then, you know, um, when it comes back down nice and hard, you have a nice firm, you know, landing, if you will. So this is not a drag racing style strut. It's not a wanted. This is not a drag race car. This is going to be a street car. So I've chosen the single adjustable strange coilover struts here. So the way that these work is your kit here has a sleeve that will simply slide over your strut like this. You have a spanner nut here that you can lock and adjust. Ooh, yeah. And actually, you got a seal here that will go over like that. You got your spring itself. Okay. And then you got the hat. This is the result of having a nice bead blaster at home in your garage. We're going to start here with a spindle. This is an SN95 spindle. Okay, this is obviously very common uh, with a five lug swap. Okay, this is straight off 94 Mustang um, to accept much larger brakes, which will be coming up in a video as well. So, guys, I have a separate video on doing a um, five lug conversion and front brake Cobra conversion. It's like four or five different videos long. Go check that out. They're pretty old. Search the channel if you're interested in the specifics, very specifics on just doing five lug and cobra rate conversions. We're not going to go off. This is going to be completely different. But the point is, starting with a spindle here, we're going to slide it on to AJE's lower ball joint. Now this ball joint comes in the A arms installed, and it also comes with a bag for zerk fitting and a cotter pin for your castle nut. That's cool. However, the ball joint is a stock style ball joint, okay? The stock style ball joints are going to be a lot longer. The studs are longer, which means the taper is going to be, um, it, you're not going to get as much compression with your castle nut. You can't get as much compression on the castle nut on a stock one with an S95 spindle, okay? So these are meant for a stock style um, spindle. Now, I wanted to call AJE and ask them if they had a an option whenever you order the A-arms to get the ball joint mint for an SN95 spindle. I'm going to call them probably Monday and ask them if that's possible because I would rather change the ball joint itself out to match an SN95 spindle here versus using a spacer or washer. I wasn't a fan of that when I put this on my 86, this kind of setup on my 86 and uh, 
yeah, I'm not exactly a fan of it here either, um, but it will work. For, but the first thing we need, we'll slide this on, and you can see here, you can see how much room they got here. So see what I'm saying here? So even if this bottoms out in the thread, you're not gonna get compression you need on the taper here at all. So it's really dangerous actually to, to install this. Plus your casting nut will be so far down here, your cotter pin won't even be um, in, in range of the castle nut, right? So let's get everything separate here, 30. Okay. Now, per instructions, what you want to do here is, of course, always use jack stands to support the chassis. Okay, number two, it says remove the springs and strut from the center of the car and set aside. And if using a stock style non adjustable, you need to grind off the ring around the top of the strut before installing in the car, which is all here is what I'm talking about. This is why I just replaced mine a little easier. Once the struts are prepped, coat the strut body with poly grease and then slide the coil over down the sleeve uh, to the lower strap and bolts on the spindle. Okay, yeah. so the strap they're talking about is right here. This is the sleeve they're talking about. So they're saying coat the body with some poly grease. So See how slow that slid on now? That grease really makes it stick. Okay. Cool. Okay, we're going to actually spin these down as far as they can go. So, it's not listed from the further instructions, but it's a good idea, at least in my... Um, at least in my opinion, it's a really good idea to put some sort of lubricant on these threads. I'm going to use anti-seize on these. Um, I've had a good luck with these with turbo clamps and everything else. I don't want to glob it on, but the idea is to give some sort of lubrication between the threads and the collar here, the threaded collar, um, and the threads in your aluminum spanner nuts here. So all I'm going to do is just, I may need some more of this for the other side. Ooh. All right, got a little crazy with the anti seize Get a little rubbing alcohol here to clean up some of the excess. Okay, so of course you'll put your spring on. Actually, take that back. I'm gonna put this boot on like this. Okay, dust boot, spring, and now the hat. This is the spring hat with a nylon bushing. That sits inside the spring group here. Okay, now depending on what type of caster camera plate, it's going to kind of depend on what bushings uh, will go on here. But at least on mine with the spherical bearings, you've got these two pieces here that essentially ride inside the spherical bearings. So where my fingers and thumb is, is where it sits inside the spherical bearing and essentially will be sandwiched on um, just like this. So you'll see that your spherical bearing will be sitting here on your caster camera plate. Then what you could do is you can actually install this spacer if need be, and then your nut, your retaining nut. That's why they recommend, you know, starting these down the lowest position, so that it's just up from there. You know what I mean? So that way it's easy to to install the strut without having to, you know, compress the spring. And that's one, in my opinion, like the one of the biggest advantages of using coilovers is that you don't have to use a spring compressor to deal with that mess. So you can install them just like this, easy peasy. So now we got room on this nut here. So basically we're gonna slide it in whoosh, without the top two. We'll slide it in just as you see here. We'll put this bearing on. This is what slides into my spherical bearing into the caster camber plate. And then we'll bolt on our um, strut to the spindle. Now the tricky part about installing these is not to let everything slide off because you wanna grab it by the spring. The spring's gonna to wanna to pop off and the sleeve wants to pop off. You really have to hold everything kind of by the base here. But what I'm gonna do is slide it in first. Move the piss out of the way. Slide in that bottom retainer. Remember guys, this is all mock-up. Everything I'm doing here has got to be removed for paint and body work. This is just, just mock-up.
But yeah, that's it. The coilovers are installed. Um, they're tight. They're ready for everything to be mocked up. Um, yeah, this is going to be awesome, man. Can't wait to get the brake calipers on. I've got new Timken bearings coming on here, or new Timken hubs. Uh, these are the old ones, so those will slide over the spindle, and then we'll work on the awesome sauce, Cadillac brakes. Yes, that's the next video. That's another video. I got so many video lines up, I can't, I can't even keep track of what's coming up next anymore. Listen, man, that is going to do it for this video. I went to Summit. They didn't have the disc spindles I went looking for, or the uh, rotors, I mean, I went looking for. And like a lot of people right now, I'm waiting on parts. So we are waiting on a rack and pinion, steering rack, we're waiting on rotors so I can do the video on the Cadillac, um, Cadillac Brembos. But uh, let me show you guys these rotors. I don't know if you've seen them yet. Let me go grab one. Yes, they say Cadillac on there. They will not say Cadillac when I'm done. These are just Brembos, um, but we're gonna grind these down and um, give them a different paint job. So they will not say Cadillac. They'll say something else though, we'll see. So anyways, these are gonna look pretty rad. Back here. But no point in doing this until we get the uh, spindles in. So lots to do, lots to do. I still have a pedal conversion to do. May knock that out tonight, make another video on that tonight. Um, yeah, go over the EcoBoost motor, start looking at what is actually missing. Um, I, I want to do a video just on the EcoBoost motor itself, kind of going over all the components, what it is, and um, how this thing's going to work. But essentially, I'm missing a few things. I'm missing the heater pipe, I'm missing the heater crossover pipe. There's a pipe that goes along the back here, the T's in the side of the block. Because I hear all the heater hoses I'm kind of missing. It's cut right here, but this goes actually, I think, out to the heater core in the, um, in the firewall. And um, I'm also missing some brackets. I'm missing the bracket for the AC compressor. And Chris, the guy I bought this from, he hit me up. He said he got it, but I'm missing the bolts for it. Um, and a bracket, I think, for the AC compressor. And I'm also missing a bracket for the alt or some bolts, not bracket, but I'm missing some studs for the alternator on their side here. So I need to go through and just really get like a good inventory of everything I've got, everything I'm missing, and then start getting all that bolted on. And then what we'll do is we'll kind of mock up the transmission. Oh, I also need a flywheel. Like, I've got two flywheels over here. One is a 157 tooth, and one is, see, this is a 157, but this, that's my old, T5 flywheel, and the problem with those is they're 50 ounce balanced or imbalanced, and the EcoBoost is internally balanced, so you cannot put a 50 ounce Fox or early, um, early four. This is from a um, early 29 302 351. They're like 120 something tooth, 127 or something. You can't put those on uh, because the, the this has a 28 ounce imbalance versus the 50 ounce with the Fox. But anyways, I need a neutral balance flywheel is my point. So I need a neutral, ba neutral balance flywheel and then we'll need a new clutch. So we can bolt it on my old T5 back here, put the bell house on and we can at least lift and put everything in place and test fit it. Okay, I need to get the motor in place. Once the motor's in place and sitting here, then I can start mocking up intake, um, where the battery cable's gonna go, where I'm gonna put the ECU, how I'm gonna run the, um, you know, the heater lines, the AC lines, the stuff that really is gonna take a lot of work to figure out. So that everything can come back apart. Everything's gonna come off of it again, everything. Um, and it's gonna go in for body and paint. Okay, so a lot of guys are asking me, it looks unfinished, it is unfinished, man. I haven't even put filler in this yet. This is just epoxy base epoxy coat primer and then after you know everything's fitted and built because I don't know if I'm gonna need holes in here I don't know if I'm gonna need to put brackets anywhere you know I don't know I may have to cut a hole in the side of this for you know an intake or over here um, we gotta figure out turbo piping this thing is a turbo motor so yeah I mean turbo piping has got to fit here somewhere along with radiator AC condenser and all that stuff there's a lot of parts I need like everybody else we're gonna be dealing with parts problems so Real life car man problems, man. But at least we got some suspension pieces on. Looks pretty good. Can't complain. And uh, yeah, I guess the next time you guys might see me, we'll be bringing home uh, a new Ford, new Mustang to our stable. So I'm really excited about that. I really hope she's excited. I'm excited to bring this car home. So yeah, yeah, lots to do. I wish there was more stuff I could do. I'm having a great time working on this now. I'm actually having a lot of fun. The weather's nice. It's just, yeah, you're tired of hearing me talk. 
short video for just the coilover install. No big deal. Need a lot of parts. If you guys, actually, I, I said I'm waiting on a power rack. I haven't bought it yet. Um, I'm looking for a power rack is what I should have said. Should have said. I'm looking for a power rack, um, and then I've ordered the rotors, the Cobra rotors. Yep. I guess I can put the rear end in that. No, nope, I need suspension parts for it. So, yep, the rear end needs to go in. But anyways, I got plenty to do. There's no lack of work. Uh, we can start working on, I guess, the pedal assembly. That might be neat. Anyways, hey, we'll see you guys next time. Subscribe, follow me on Instagram. Instagram, House Doula. Okay, easy. HouseDoula.com, in case you forget. All my crap's up there. We'll see you guys next time. Take care.